Hello everybody, welcome back to Cinema Savvy. It is myself, George, bringing a brand new review. And today I'm going to be talking about The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, co-written and directed by Guy Ritchie, which is streaming on the 25th of July here in the United Kingdom, which released many months ago in America. And I'm here to give my thoughts on the film. And this is going to be a very weird one to talk about because the film this week everyone's talking about is obviously Deadpool and Wolverine. So I'm very curious to see who sees this in the UK. Uh, not many people seem to have seen it in America. It kind of came and went. But before I start talking about my thoughts on the film, having finally seen it, I do want to, of course, send you over to our social medias where you can find out about other videos we're working on, new releases, upcoming series, that sort of stuff. We've just obviously finished doing loads of TV stuff with Doctor Who and The Acolyte, so there's a there's a bit of a gap. We've got some things we're going to work on behind the scenes, but that's linktree.com slash cinema savvy, and that'll take you through to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and there's a link to our Redbubble store as well if you want to pick up any merch. But going back to this film... Um, Guy Ritchie's cranked out another, uh, and that's kind of a weird thing to say. He's had a lot of releases here in the UK that just ended up on Amazon Prime over the last few years. Uh, and he's producing a lot of films as well as not just producing, but directing them. He's also done the Gentleman series on Netflix too. He's been a busy guy. And I remember a trailer for this just came out of nowhere, but I don't know when this film was announced. I don't know if it had been announced before, um, but it just kind of appeared. It was like new Guy Ritchie film, World War II is a fictional take on Operation Postmaster, for those that know their UK history, which was set in 1941 uh, and was very important for, for the war efforts and it involves Ian Fleming and I'll be talking about stuff very soon with that basically summed up uh, and the re review could end here, it's Guy Ritchie's version of Inglorious Bastards and uh, that maybe is going to offend a couple of people. It's billed as a spy action comedy I don't particularly see it as those three things, but what I do see it as is a Guy Ritchie film. Guy Ritchie doing World War II the way Guy Ritchie would. And there's some things that work with that, and there are some things that don't work with that, and that kind of, kind of seems to be a Guy Ritchie thing, right? He's not for everybody. I enjoy a lot of his films, and I dislike a lot of his films. He's a filmmaker, which I think you either tend to like or dislike, each project by project. Uh, and I'm always going to give it the benefit of the doubt. It's starring Henry Cavill, it's got Henry Golding, uh, oh god, Carrie Ullis is in it, you've got, I forgot the actor's name, uh, he plays Ian Fleming in this and he's just been in the House of Dragon um, as uh, uh, Laris Hightower. There's a pretty great cast and it's so weird watching this film because I normally get funny with World War II stuff, I enjoyed my history at school, people that subscribe are probably bored of me saying that. I can't tell you I knew about Operation Postmaster start to finish. This is based off a book written by Damien Lewis, as in the Damien Lewis from Band of Brothers, who's now a singer as well. Uh, and it talks about the, the origins of, of what is this. And very much this film likes to make the point that Ian Fleming being in this, the events of this operation is what led to him creating and modelling the James Bond character. So of course we get Henry Cavill playing the person that Bond would be based off. And... I kind of love that at the same time as not because it's like Henry Cavill's been in this almost James Bond film. He was also uh, in, oh god, I forgot the name. Was it a Guy Ritchie one? What was the the, the, the the spy film about 10 years ago, the remake? Man from Uncle. He was in the Man from Uncle, basically playing a James Bond type in there as well. He's done the TV advert with the DB5. Uh, now, at this point in time, I'm sure they wouldn't have announced Bond with me recording this to, to release him this, but he is someone I would have loved to have seen being James Bond. And I love the fact he keeps taking these James Bond-esque roles. Uh, we had the, oh god, the Matthew Vaughan from earlier this year. Which, of course, he was playing the the spy in there as well. Ridiculous haircut, much better in this. And I very much enjoyed him in this. And we know Henry Cavill's a great leading man. But I'm just not sure. If this, I can't grasp past that that history side of things. I, I know it's inspired by true events. But when it's a Guy Ritchie film, there's just nothing you can take seriously about it. I really like his Sherlock Holmes films, by the way. But there's just something about this where I would love, with the story uh, and the real life side of things... I would have loved to have seen a serious, not a serious director, but an actual serious take on this. Maybe it's been done in the past, I don't know. But to get something as big as this, as important as this was in the war effort, I'm not going to go into the specifics so you guys can watch the film, but getting it sort of brushed down to this jokey 
squadron of haha we don't you know we don't like the nazis we're gonna kill them all that's where these ingrowth bastards vibes come from it's them doing almost this undercover mission into enemy territory they've got to you know destroy the boats to stop the u-boats etc etc that kind of stuff but for how important this was in the war i i don't think guy Ritchie was the right person to to be doing this and i don't mind the action the comedy side of things but i'd much rather like ingrowth bastards if guy Ritchie wanted to do a world war ii film go and do something completely fictional and i know this is inspired by but i just think it sort of ridicules some of the real life stuff and i always feel a bit like that with history things if you go for something completely fictional i don't mind it but when you're trying to mix and merge and you're picking and choosing certain real bits it just never seems to work for me personally and maybe it does for others maybe a lot of people like this i don't think it's a film many people are going to watch with it streaming I think if it's on the Netflix homepage, great, but I just don't think Prime Video has reached that level of size where something's on there everyone watches. You look at their biggest things, The Boys, which got humongous, but it's a it's a superhero satire. Of course it was going to be successful. But The Rings of Power, which is Lord of the Rings, you've had Fallout based off an incredible video game series. They've never really had these original things pop up and take anywhere by storm because Prime Video just isn't that big. To have done that yes there's a humongous subscriber count because everyone's got amazon prime but they're not there with their films yet even the roadhouse remake and it stars conor mcgregor so i mean that's a weird sentence to say still but it's just one of them where i'm not sure them as a studio what they're up to but to take this away from a cinema release would this have been enhanced by being in a cinema maybe not but again a new guy Ritchie film goes onto amazon prime and there's no marketing here in the uk it's just there People are going to have to really find it to watch it. Whereas most of the general audience, they don't go finding films. They wait for the films to come to them. And I think the cast themselves is pretty good in this. They're very enjoyable on screen with each other. There's a lot of chemistry there with them. And I quite enjoy the antics of them. The opening scene is, is probably one of those moments where it sets everything in motion for what you need from the characters. And I like how they introduce certain characters, their personality traits, recruiting them into this very quiet, you know, this very quiet mission that's so important that no one can know about it. I like so much of that. But there's just something about this that hasn't worked for me. Uh, and even when I'm trying to take things down, you know, it's what you expect of a garage film. There's the flashy, there's the over-stylized editing. The fact the title is got ungentlemanly in it and the whole purpose of this is that these guys they're not gentlemen you know they may slit someone's throat and they may shoot up a place they're they're not you know the uh the the, the king's tongue old boy that kind of thing they're doing all that language that dialect the whole purpose is is they're they're not gentlemen and it kind of wears off after 20 30 minutes and i think at times the cast feel a bit wasted whilst working and i'm just in this really weird middle ground of the film it was pleasantly enjoyable but there is nothing to it. And I think ultimately it ends up being a waste of potential, uh, a waste of some of these, ca these cast members. I don't think it's a film I said people are going to go and see, but ultimately I just think it, it becomes another film on streaming that no one's going to watch, that no one's going to talk about, no one's going to remember. Uh, and, and for Guy Ritchie, it's a bit of a shame. Why aren't his films coming out of the cinema? The Gentleman was massive when it came out here in the UK. I'm talking about the film, not the TV series. It came out, I'm pretty sure, Boxing Day... Uh, 20, 2019 or 2018 it was very successful it ended up then getting the Netflix series why aren't they committing to the theatrical releases I know that MGM has the whole Amazon stuff going on in the background you want to really get into conspiracy theories MGM, James Bond, Henry Cavill this, great obviously yeah, it's not going to happen but we can dream and I just feel a, a bit yeah I feel a bit meh with this I, I don't know if I was going to do a review on this film I don't normally review negative films I don't think this is a terrible film I just think there's something completely off about it. It's halfway there. It needed another rewrite. It needed further direction into the sense of story. It either needed to commit to the real life story or it needed to completely be its own thing. As I said, you could do an ungentlemanly warfare squad. Just don't base it off real events. But it felt like they really wanted to make a point of having Ian Fleming in this. They really wanted to make a point of saying, this is what led to James Bond being created. And that in turn then adds Henry Cavill into the mix. It feels like, and that's why Henry Cavill's in this film. And he's good in it. Uh, and as I said, I'd love to see him as Bond. But it just feels like a, a, a knock knock who's there uh, type film. It's like, <laughs> we all know what you're all thinking. And yeah, I, I, I don't have much more to say past that. Um, there's, there's some things that work, some that don't evil nazis being evil nazis 
uh, some very great stylized suits. There's good moments of tension. There's a really cool train sequence in there that I enjoyed. But again, you just can't take it seriously because it's a Guy Ritchie film. And with it being a Guy Ritchie film, you know what you're in for at this point in time, don't you? So that's going to do it for this review today. I'm curious to know what people think, if they've seen it, if they liked it, if they didn't like it. If I'm on a different wavelength or something opposite, please do comment and let me know. If you like this review, if you like other reviews, you can go check us out. Obviously, subscribe. There'll be a lot more. Facebook, Letterbox, Twitter, Instagram, all on our link tree in the description below. So that's going to do it for today's review. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.